Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an Impressionist Realist Painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde J.K.L. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, volcanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand and watercolor, pen and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. And welcome to another episode of the Artist Friends Podcast. My name is Clyde J. Kell, and this is episode 92 for April the 12th, Monday, April the 12th, 2021. I'm here with my two best artist friends, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. Hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everybody. Hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. Another outstanding week award-winning audio entertainment yeah right oh. <laughs> i hope our listeners appreciate what we try to do okay if, if you uh, for our listeners if you go to www.talkartpodcast.com that's talkartpodcast.com you'll see the recommended videos and we've got a few videos from our raffi and clee friends and um, then a, a video of a gentleman talks about how to find collectors on Instagram. We might get to that. And uh, then a uh, video from Sergio Gomez introducing a uh, virtual gallery service for artists, which I think is, is going to be pretty interesting. Um, for our listeners, you definitely want to stay tuned because for our 100th episode, we are going to present an online exhibition of our art. We are planning on doing the video version of the podcast to introduce some of our art. And then I'm going to, I'm really considering using that virtual service, set up a virtual exhibition and there'll be a page and these are, this is all coming. So stay tuned for more information as we count down to our 100th episode of the artist friends podcast. With this episode, let's talk about art. And I like uh, Rafi's tips on uh, how to talk about your art. And for artists, that always seems to be the hardest thing when we meet strangers and they ask us questions about our art. And uh, unless you attend a bunch of shows, which has not been easy and available with COVID-19 and with the pandemic, and if you had been going to shows, you might be getting a little rusty. So I gave Diane and Constance a heads up. So hopefully they'll be prepared. We're going to, <laughs> we're going to pretend for this episode that uh, each of us is at a show. And then the other ones will be the strangers coming up and talking about their art. So up in queue on the first list, as always, is Diane. She is at an art show. She has her art displayed 
uh, in a gallery. She's standing in front of it, and me and Constance are visiting, and we are going to ask Diane questions about her art. So picture in your mind, Diane, me and Constance, we're just, we just walked up to you, and... <laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> How are you? Oh, I'm doing just fine. Good. How are you? Are you enjoying the show? Yeah, there's a lot of interesting art. I've seen the. Uh, you seem to have a lot of paintings of goats. What's with the goats? <laughs> I live on a small farm, and we do have goats. Um, they're basically our lawnmowers, so we don't have to mow the fields. But uh, yeah, if they. They enjoy me out there in the field painting sometimes. <laughs> they enjoy trying to steal my brushes and knocking my easel over and <laughs> chewing on my clothes. <laughs> but they'll, they usually settle down um, once they check everything out and then I can paint. How do you get them to settle down? How do you get them to pose for you? Because you got some interesting poses. <laughs> um, you just have to wait them out, basically, and then they'll, they'll get bored with whatever you know and go lay down or go eat or whatever they do <laughs> oh. they just kind of all right i was i was i was just curious about the ghost but uh, <laughs> a more serious question i i noticed your style what, what kind of style do you consider yourself or what what kind of what, what's your style of painting i paint realistically um with some impressionism thrown in there but um most of it's realistic uh, I like to get an impression of the the feelings that I have when I'm in a location because I do do a lot of on location painting, um, but yeah, it's mostly realistic and uh, nature involved and landscapes, seascapes, animals, what kind things of, around me. Are you trying to tell a story or something, or what? The... I think most of the things I paint are um, nostalgic in some way to my memories and things of when I was a kid or things that are um, around in around in my life right now um, nature and I since I live out in the country and there's a lot of farms and you know farm animals and the ocean's not too far I live not too far from the bay the Chesapeake Bay too so a lot of that stuff's around in my environment that's usually what I'm painting um, so what um, medium do you paint in Mostly oils, but I've also used acrylic and watercolor. So you said you mainly paint things that are nostalgic to you. So, do you... <laughs> yeah, I've, I grew up around going to the ocean. You know, summers in the at the spend summers at the ocean, and um, we actually had a marina for a while. So I, I've grown up around boats and you know the Chesapeake Bay, and there's been a lot of water in my past <laughs> as far as when I where I was when I was growing up. So I have a lot of that in uh, a lot of my paintings. You, got, you guys gonna start talk, asking me questions? You're up next, yep, we're gonna ask All right. you. Okay. So, picture in your mind, Diane and I, we just, we're, we're walking by, you're in a gallery and you're standing in front of your paintings and we're just standing in front of you. Say hello, how are y'all doing? Hi. <laughs> Diane, you wanna, you wanna ask her first? Or? Okay, um, how are you? Are you, Doing good. Are you, are you enjoying are you the show? A good show? Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Uh, yeah. What kind nice. of art do you do? Uh, I do uh, abstracts and still lifes and landscapes and oils and pastels. Have you been working a long time? Most of my life I've been painting as an artist. So, yes. Uh, what kind of art do you enjoy the most of, of the things it you do? It depends on my mood. Um, I like to do the abstracts when uh, when I feel like I've got emotions going on that I need to get out. And that's how I get the emotions out is through abstract paintings. And I like to do landscapes when it's beautiful outside. <laughs> I guess I'm a fair weather painter. <laughs> and then I like to do this land, the still lifes in the studio. So when it's too hot to go out to do, to do paintings outside, that way I can paint 
year round and you know i guess i like to eat the buffet of all the kinds of arts that are available <laughs> but, do you use yeah. mostly paint or you work in other mediums uh, i use oil paints and pastels sometimes i'll throw alcohol inks in or watercolors i usually in the, those i'll do like a mixed media with pastels well, that sounds like fun it is <laughs> um so you said you paint abstract when you got something when you're disturbed or got something bothering you you must have really been disturbed with that big one standing behind you there that uh, reminds me of a jackson pollock like you just kind of slapped that paint on there were, were you upset at somebody or angry at somebody um no i just wanted to do some really large canvases so i when I had the studio that I was in when I painted, I've got three of these that are larger like this. And I would put them on the wall and work on them a little bit and then take them off the wall in the studio and put them back on the floor and work on them that way. I guess like Jackson Pollock did. But a lot of times when I am, I don't know how to describe it. I guess when I'm feeling need to, to break free, because I do did portraits a lot too. And when I, and they're like kind of a tight, you know thing to do so when i feel like i want to loosen myself back up i like to do the abstracts okay. and, co and use color theory when i do them you know, are is your is your art trying to tell a story or something or what i mean are you are, are, are you saying something about your life or it's about my feelings i guess what I'm, whatever I'm feeling at the time, you know, I do love abstracts because they're so freeing. Um, you do have to think about where you're going to put what paint, what colors to use, and stuff like that. But the apple, ap actual application of the paint is very freeing when you do kind of like a Jackson Pollock thing. It's it's very you get to be expressive, you know. So that's what I like about them. Okay. All right, you two. It's my mm -hmm. turn. I'm standing in the gallery in front of, at a show in front of my paintings, and so you two walk up to me and hi. Hi there. Are you the artist? Yes, I'm the artist. This is some of my stuff that's uh, displayed here. And uh, you see anything you like or? Um. Yeah, I really like the uh, one that's right there behind you. That reminds me of some place in Italy. <laughs> I don't know if it is or not, but yeah, actually it was. It was uh, uh, created from a uh, photograph that I and my daughters took in uh, St. Peter's Square. And just as I uh, snapped the picture, a, uh, a pigeon flew up in front. And of course, we didn't know that until afterwards when we were looking at the pictures. And it kind of inspired me to, uh, and I call it holy pigeons. <laughs> Now, did you paint that in oils or, or what? Uh, this was actually completed in, uh, it's a, uh, I guess you could call it a multimedia project. Um, it was painted in acrylics or in uh, watercolors first, watercolor, pen and ink. And then I sent it to a printer and had them uh, put it on a uh, 30 by 40 inch uh, canvas. And then I've applied some acrylics to it. It's, it's actually, it's not, it's not done. It's more of a work in progress. I still want to add some more and embellish it a little bit more. So you could call it a, uh, you know, multimedia that was done with watercolors and then uh, manipulated digitally. And then uh, it will be finished up with uh, acrylic and uh, possibly oil. All right. So what are you um, working mostly? Sounds like you're working a lot of different things. I started out with uh, working in watercolors because uh, actually I've been creating art uh, my whole life, but it's only been about the last uh, uh, four years that I've decided to uh, uh, make a career out of, of it. And because I had been 26 years since I've done anything, I started out with watercolors just to reopen the brain cells, reactivate the, the connections and, and, and to see if I still remembered. And the watercolors was the easiest uh, in a studio apartment. They were non-toxic or whatever. And then I advanced to acrylics. 
started working with acrylics and getting familiar with those again. And I wanted to paint in oil because when I was uh, a teenager, I painted quite a bit in oils. But back then, oils was, you had to be outside or in an open area. You know, oils was with the turpentine, everything's toxic. But a very good artist friend of mine recommended with, you know, today's modern technology, um, you can use uh, walnut oil and uh, non-toxic, uh, 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 non-solvent paints. And they work just as well. And so I've tried those and now I just love it. Now I predominantly, now I paint with oils, but, uh, I still love my watercolors and I go back to my watercolors every once in a while. But, uh, so, you know, and then I still loved, uh, digital. So every once in a while I'll, uh, I may, uh, take one of my paintings that have been completed by hand and scan it, photograph it, scan it in the computer and, uh, manipulate it a little bit and, maybe come up with a, uh, a, a unique piece of artwork in, in either case. Sometimes have it printed out, other times just, uh, you know, have it put online, you know, that way. Do you do mostly landscapes or you do other things? I would say that whatever strikes my fancy, and I'll be honest with you, uh, my daughters are excellent photographers, so whatever photographs they uh, take and send to me, if it's the flowers, then I do flowers and botanicals. And I've been recently getting into still life. I'm trying to improve my skills. So I've been taking an online course. And so I've really enjoyed uh, painting in still life. Uh, there's a lot more uh, aspects and a lot more challenge to it, challenges than what I had thought originally. So uh, I would say uh, ski seascapes, landscapes, historical monuments, because I lived in Italy for a while. So um, quite a bit of the uh, monuments over there uh, fascinate me. And I have more of a connection because I can, um, I can relate to them when I see the image. It's, I've been there. I visited that. So, you know, I'm a, I'm a studio artist. I'm not a plain air artist, as some people will say. I, I paint from photographs, but I, uh, I'm able to uh, combine the uh, subject from the photographs in, you know, in, into my work, to, of my of my own imagination, my own creations. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> so you don't do you haven't gone outside at all yet? <laughs> yeah. Are you working doing the still lives from life, or are you working from uh, photographs for them too? I have done a couple of my own settings. I've, I've done a, a couple settings, but I just don't, I don't have the, a lot of the material to do is just set up a, a proper setting with the flowers and things. And it's just a matter. I've just got to go out and, and source the material, but there are so many wonderful photographs that you can still, uh, but uh, my artist friends tell me that uh, there's nothing like painting from life. You have a much vi uh, uh, more vibrant colors and, and see shadows and the light play better than what you can from photographs. So it's on my uh, agenda. It's on my future to-do list, you know, to get around to. Sounds good. All right. <laughs> well, hope you have a great show. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. I, I appreciate you taking the time to, to look at my artwork. Okay. Now... <laughs> Graphy's 10 list of do's and don'ts to see how we messed up. <laughs> I hope our listeners thought that was fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, believe me, making up stuff as we went. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Try, trying to get in practice. practice. A little improv in, improv improvisation. <laughs> yeah. We, yeah, it was improv all the way. <laughs> but I uh, see. His, uh, I got, I wrote down his list and the number one mm -hmm. I said, uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, know who you're talking to read the room. So that's kind of, that was kind of hard for us almost. <laughs> yeah, to, yeah. Cause we're not actually in yeah, a spot. You know, the, the other people, you know, there's just the three of us here and a little be postage stamp si size screens on a computer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but uh, and uh, be honest. So, 
Do you think we all all t- can tick that box off? Do you think we were all honest? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And this is uh, uh, don't. Oh yeah, don't be a, a sleazy sales. I don't think neither one. <laughs> I didn't tell you, hey, if you buy this one, get 20% off. I didn't do anything like that. Yeah. yeah. I, I I can go <laughs> talk about that. I saw. I've been in sales. I could go that route. I could slide into that mode like you would not believe. And <laughs> I've, nah, you know, I don't like have, having it done to me, so I don't think I would do it to somebody else. But if I'm not careful, if somebody just says the right things, I can almost slide into you know the salesman thing and i'd probably ruin it <laughs> uh let's see one of his others has said uh oh have a have a go-to topic and that never came up to use that option actually i don't think either one maybe, maybe i maybe i did a little bit about my daughters you know you know taking photographs you know a little bit so but Either the other two, you are Diane, you are Constance. You really didn't have a go to topic. I was pushing Constance about <laughs> I was trying to be my like, you know, uh visitor when I made the comment about the uh the uh uh Well, I'm kinda rusty when it comes to displaying art. Uh but when it comes to displaying jewelry it's a different thing. If I have a booth full of jewelry then it's a lot easier to talk about. You know. Um, you know, yeah. What I like is yeah. You know, in his next one, he says, you know, uh, let's see what, yeah, oh yeah, uh, when yeah, when somebody he says, be prepared when somebody you know throws you a you know like a you know a, a smell like comment like first thing out of bat with Diane those goats I had to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that really well. You didn't. You didn't. <laughs> It didn't come across like, well, what are you talking about goats? I mean, <laughs> but I have, uh-huh. you do have two or three paintings of goats, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, I do. I don't have very many of them, but I do have some. Yep. <laughs> so I had to, you know, I had to throw, throw in, I was trying to knock you off, but you did really, really well. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Pretty good too. Whenever I threw that thing about, you so you said you're so you're angry when you're doing your abstract. I mean, I <laughs> try to get constant get a rise out of me. You didn't <laughs> knock you off, <laughs> yeah, whatever. And let's see, yeah, prepare yourself. Well, okay, we really didn't have much preparation here, you know. And <laughs> and the, the basic the basic gist of all of this, you know, like I said, focus on your art. All three of us did that. We didn't go off talking about, you know, what, your life history. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, you know, and we didn't go. Nobody in. wants to hear about it. <laughs> oh, I was just, I was, I was just hoping, Constance, don't start talking about your migraines. I just, uh, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, it's a very real thing, but hey, I've hey just, nobody wants to hear it. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I, I, hey, I think we all, you know, what do you, you two agree? Do you think we did all right for the first time? You know. Kind of yeah, a, considering it was kind of an awkward <laughs> thing doing this, but yeah, improv. Yeah, but. online. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot different when you're standing there in your booth and somebody comes up and starts talking to you. But yeah, you need just just be as honest and real as you you can be. You know, I mean, when I was selling jewelry, I used to have uh, people come up and talk to me about the jewelry, but then I'd have people come up and talk to me about how I made something, and. I always told them exactly how I made something. I didn't not give them the information because I didn't want them to do it. I would just, you know, help them. I think a lady bought a piece of jewelry from me one time after she stood there while I was talking to somebody else about how I did this or that with the, you know, I was teaching them how to do something like make a loops in the wires and wraps and stuff. And she, afterwards she came up to me and said, you were really nice with those girls wanting to learn how to do this. And I said, well, you know, everybody has to start learning somewhere if that's what they really want to do. Yeah. I thought, I, I thought this was, you know, Hey, for an impromptu thing. Yeah. I want well, it to be something different for our listeners, you know, kind of mm-hmm. 
because you know you listen to some of our we, if we're not careful we get a little preachy you know a little preachy at time you know because our main purpose of these of these uh podcasts you know recordings is to uh inspire and to motivate uh if there are artists out there want to be artists and want to call themselves artists but they don't feel right or there's people who they, they want to get involved with the uh in shows or you know so that's each week I try try to come up. Plus, we didn't. Neither one of us pulled. I was going to. I was thinking about. I was going to pull. You know, uh, pull a uh, an art history question. But in our, you know, each month we try to cover something about art history. You have to know a little bit about art history and know previous artists because somebody comes up and says, "Well, like okay, I, when I said Jackson Pollock, Constance didn't back away. She knew who Jackson Pollock was." Yeah, there may be some artists who don't know, you know, so you got to be aware of other artists and their styles, you know, and everything. So, yeah, I have had people come up and say um, they like a certain artist or something, and I had no idea who it was. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. You know, it's just, you just kind of have to, it's, it's like any other conversation. You have to, um, you know, you kind of go with the punches. You don't, you know, can't like, I don't know. You, you don't want to sound pretentious or something where you're like all hoity toity and you, they're, you're too good you know, to talk to them or anything, you know. You know? <laughs> it takes practice to just, um, yeah, be mm-hmm. yourself and and answer questions. So people ask the strangest things sometimes. They, they tell you the strangest things. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, <laughs> you just have to be prepared for anything and, and, and everything. It's like I'll be honest. I have never, really I've never been in a, in a you know. Uh, where I've you know had to stand in front of my paintings and have people come up and ask, and I'll be honest with you, I don't know if I ever will. It's sort of terrifying, and <laughs> and at first, because but then when you get used to talking about your work and and uh, helping people when they're looking at stuff, then it just become it it come that terrified feeling just sort of vanishes. I mean, I see. Um, I I did it with the jewelry I sold every Saturday, and you know you set the booth up it takes it's a lot of work people i don't know if people realize that how much work it is to set a booth up but um i feel safe i feel safe uh you know behind a microphone and behind a computer <laughs> but a live in-person event let me tell you i am the classic when you hear about artists are introverted i'm the introvert <laughs> well it's something you have to practice and i mean i'm not all that of a, much of an extrovert either but um the more you do it the more you get used to it and you just you, do, kinda, you get more comfortable in your, it, your yeah it doesn't really bother you too much after after a while <laughs> rappy rappy and clay that's what they like talking about it you know i said yeah the first couple of times may be you know stressful but then after a while you uh, yeah you start getting a little more relaxed and a little, yeah it's just like anything else you know the, the more you practice it the, the easier it gets yeah so it's so I think we're going to wrap up this episode. We didn't get to talking about the, the Instagram stuff or, or the, the other videos, but, uh, but see, Rappy, he talks a little bit about social media, you know, and his, his advice is the same as, is, you know, that's your way of building relationships and, you know, using social media. So don't shy away from it. But, um, uh, the rule I don't expect to make a living from so showing things on Instagram. I just, you know, I mean, it's like they say that, you know, you just never know where a sale is going to come from. And you just have to act like, you know, just do what you're comfortable doing and figure it out. Eventually things will start to happen for you, you know, so. And the, uh, um, when we took, the three of us, when we took the, the class with, you know, Paul Klein, one thing that he kept going over and he repeated himself over and over again, he says building relationships. And he used the example that if you, you, know, you don't go up to him and say, Hey, you want to go to bed? <laughs> you get yourself smacked. You know, <laughs> I don't know about today's modern society, but <laughs> in our <laughs> He said, you know, you, you compliment their hair or whatever. You, yeah, you build a relationship. And he said, you have to do the same thing. Because he's referring to with, when meeting gallery owners and going to you know, galleries. But that same philosophy 
works online. And that's how I use online. All my sales have come through online, but they've come after I've, they've, I've built a bit of a relationship. They just haven't been impromptu sales. They've been, I've gotten sales commission work from my listeners of my radio stations, and they have listened to me for a long time. I recognize their names. You know, they've sent me previous emails that compliment me on my uh, radio station. They sent me donations. And then they felt comfortable to purchase, to have me do a commission for them. Uh, I've gotten uh, sales from Facebook, from people that I've followed or people that follow me that they've seen my posts and everything. And, and they, uh, it's, it's building a relationship. And so it hasn't been some quick uh, slam, bam, algorithm strategy. <laughs> it's just been a slow, gradual buildup thing. And so don't shy away from social media or anything. But don't think it's going to be, you know, when you hear these artists, you know, oh, they're making millions of dollars. I really, come on. Come on. I mean, you really got to look at it, you know. And also, don't go down the route. Instagram, this just irritates me to no end. I'm sorry. A lot of these young, pretty women artists, they're posing scat flatted <laughs> with their artwork. What are they trying to sell, themselves or their artwork? That's what goes to my mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just to get light. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I I think I've sent a couple of pictures to you, to Diane, you and Constance with a comment. When are you going to do this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, never. <laughs> oh, I've got too much snow on my chimney to be doing anything like that. <laughs> uh, okay. Photoshopping that one. <laughs> With that, let's wrap this up. You have been listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 92 for April the 12th, 2021. And I've been here with Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. My name is Clyde J. Kale. Thank you so much for listening. I'm going to say goodbye to Diane and Constance, and I'll let Diane say goodbye to everybody. Good night, everyone. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Constance. <laughs> Good night, Clyde. Good night, Diane. Good night, everybody. Thanks for listening. Thank you so much for listening, folks. And uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, this episode. Please. If you did, give us Welcome a... back. you here. <laughs> Thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Constance, what was that comment? <laughs> I said, y'all come back. you here. <laughs> sometimes, oh, yeah. sometimes worries me. She's just a little too country at times. <laughs> <laughs> country at Southern. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. And until next time, bye-bye. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www dianehuntstudio.com Constance Bronson at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash c-b-r-o-s-n-a-n-s Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com If you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. If you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a thumbs up or star rating. And most of all, send us your comments. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license.